Welcome to Christian Fellowship. My name is Mike. Today is April 8th, 2020, and I got about 7.42, and I'm in Fall River, Massachusetts. It's a little crochet for the Lord. Uh, crochet usually all year long, and then make, it just makes scarves. And then you know, I come across people that need a scarf, or just pass them out. It's a good way to spend some time. And uh, so we're having fellowship. Thank you for being here. I never know how many are here. It could be just me and the Lord. It's the Lord sitting right here with me. And if you're or anybody's there, whoever you are, the Lord's sitting right there with you. And uh, I know that. Uh, I don't get many hits on the YouTube channel. Um, I'm not sure. I, I know I sent it out to uh, uh, Facebook and uh, Twitter. And then I sent it also to BitChute. And BitChute, I get a few more. I get about 20 hits over there. And uh, you know, most people just look. If they're not into Jesus, you know, they'll just listen maybe. and then Or they'll just blow right through it. Um, but there'll come a day when they really realize that, wow, I think I need Jesus. And he'll still be there, be waiting for him. And uh, at that time, he may choose them and open their eyes and ears to the flesh world and uh, let them know he's real. And then uh, from there, you just start walking with him. He takes you right to heaven, you know, his way. Because if we try to go our way, we're going to make it. Because um, he's the door. And when you're in the room, you got to know where the door is. Because you can't get out of the room unless you go through the door. And there's only one door. And he's the door. The Bible tells us that. And... Uh, People don't think of it in that vein, I think. You know, I, uh, I suggest everyone should read the Bible. Um, the Bible is the truth, the total truth. And you should get, now you have some time, get your wife, your kids, you and sit down and read the Bible. Turn off all this electronics, which is keeping your mind distracted from the Bible and the Lord. You know, we've all been dumbed down and say, okay, all you have to do is go to church on Sunday and that's it, you're covered. Um, I think there's more than that. That's a good thing. But uh, I know for the born again experience, there's more than that because you have a lot to learn. And He's got to erase or pull up all the weeds that are growing inside us in his garden and uh, get rid of them so that we can become more worthy for his work and then he'll use us. He may have just used us a little bit. Who knows? Everything is his choice. This is all his plan. He created all of this, including the devil, who is at war with him. And, you know, he came back from the lost sheep of Israel, not the land, but the persons, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Jacob, he changed the name from Jacob to Israel. So it wasn't a land, it was a tribe, a people. And there were 12 tribes, and there was the Levites, which were the priests that were dedicated to the Lord. Jesus, or Yahweh at that time. And um, so, and all the, and then he took the, took the people, the Israelites, out of Egypt and um, took them to the Promised Land. And that's a fascinating journey with so many ups and downs. Um, it's really unbelievable. You have to read the Old Testament. 
to see that. You, see, you get to see the whole plan. And there's a lot of the, the Israelite people, they would believe in Yahweh and they disbelieve. And they believe and they disbelieve. They go against him, they go for him. And whenever anything came bad, oh, Lord, come back and help us. Please forgive us. And the Lord did. Moses had to beg him a few times, but he was just ready to erase it. But he didn't because he had made the promise to Abraham and Isaac. Okay. So, so we're coming up on Passover. I guess it starts tonight at midnight or when the sun goes down, whatever. And this is when in Exodus, you know, that the Lord had the Israelites put blood over the doorways and above the doorway of the house and told them, don't come out. And the angel of death came through and killed the firstborn of all the houses. But the ones with the blood were left alone. And he also killed Pharaoh's firstborn. So that's what Passover really is all about. But those houses with the blood on the poles and above the doorway were passed over from the angel of death, destroying them. So that was supposed to be celebrated forever in the Israelite tribes and their descendants and their descendants. And today, really, there's a great, I mean, there still is people that live in the land of Israel. They have some believe and some you know, follow the customs and some don't. Um, or they might say, okay, well, I like this custom part of it and this part, and then, but that part I don't care for, so we won't do that part. You see, that's a that's an affront to Yahweh. And um, so that's what today is. Then we've got Easter coming up, Holy Week for the Catholics. I was born and raised a Catholic, and uh, now I just belong to Jesus, because Jesus is the church. He came to me and wants me to follow him. I try. I keep trying. And he keeps helping. I'm sure I've let him down a lot of areas, but he keeps loving me. He keeps working with me. You know, it's like sitting here right now. I mean, I could tell you, I could tell you that, okay, you got a Bible? Well, if you don't have one, you should pick one up, get them at the Dollar Tree or the Dollar Store. I mean, this all, everybody can come out of the houses. Um, or just go out and get, well, you can't because Dollar Stores are all closed. Okay, so if you can find one, then just start reading it, you know? And don't worry about if you understand it or not, just read it. Because while you're reading that, the Lord's sitting right there with you. And by taking the time to read the Bible, you make him very happy. Because he can teach you. He can talk to you. He can just show you that he's real. Then you have been born again. Then I guarantee you, you'll be running around the house and in in your area, wherever you're at, 40 feet off the ground, trying to tell everybody, Jesus is real. He's real. And then after you realize, slowly you'll come back down because you you realize that he's level, and other people don't think that way, because they are strictly living on faith. They haven't had that experience. And you have to have that experience to feel that way. You can tell people a million times that that's what happened. If it hadn't happened to them. then they don't understand it. It's just like trying to tell somebody that isn't divorced what a divorce is really like. Because the only one that really knows what it's like is a person that's got divorced. So it's kind of like what the born again experience is. So, and we have to, as being born again, we have to understand that that's okay. 
But we have a responsibility to take on more of Jesus and be an example in our life for others to see. We need to be the lamp on the lamp pole. It doesn't mean you have to be a perfect person, you know, or might be the thou of religious more than thou. No. He could probably have a homeless person that's been born again, that knows his job, and he does his job in that area. Because the Lord needs a man too. You know? So, and then as I, I send out an email every morning, um, it's inspirational email that I, I copy out of a book either called Jesus Calling or God Calling. God Calling was a book I had nothing to read that time that in 2001 when uh, the Lord came into the trailer, my wife and I were in, and uh, his spirit told me to follow him, and he left. He also told me my whole life was not meant to be. And that was exactly where I was supposed to be. So, that's what I'm doing. So, you I lost my train of thought there. That's what happens when you get old. <laughs> um, but anyway, I wanted something to read. So I asked him, I said, I need something to read. And the next day, the next morning, in the mailbox, came some books. And one of the books was a book called God Calling. And actually it was for my wife. She didn't read it. So I picked it up and I read it. And I kept reading it. And I kept reading it. And I kept reading it. Because I read the book a couple of days. I went back and read it again. I probably read it 100 times, 200 times, 300. I don't know. I started buying copies and giving them out to people. It's a great book. Now, some people in churches, they say, oh, that's an occult, you know, that's not biblical, you know. I guess they know more than God, so they got their ways. I think they should be careful in saying, what is biblical and what's not biblical? Okay. They're sending themselves and judging others. Okay. And we all do that sometimes. We got to get away from that because Jesus said, don't do that. Anyway, um, so I read from those. I, I mail them out. My email address is jesusmusic99 at gmail.com. If you'd like to get on my mailing list, just drop me an email. Email one to you every day. But it's, it's, you have to take the time to read them, to think about them. You know, they're very important. But see, I've been, I read them daily. I've been trying to get everybody to do these things because I know they're important, but people don't really want them. So now I just, I'm going to come on here and just sit with Jesus. And me right here. You can come on, we'll have fellowship. You can, you can go to a church and have fellowship. You can come here and have fellowship. You can sit in your own little room at your house or apartment or wherever you're at, and you can have fellowship. You can be in your car and have fellowship with the Lord. Okay. Anytime the Lord is coming to the subject or the conversation or the thoughts, you're having fellowship. It's like people, they get to, well, let's pray, okay? So they pray, gee, I hope this person gets better, okay? And then next day they say, well, let's pray for that. Let's, I hope this person gets better. And again, I hope this person gets better. Next day, I hope this person gets better. That's vain repetition. The Bible tells you not to do that. It tells you not to do it. Why? Think about it. And by the way, there's a video uh, on YouTube called Think About It. He's pretty good. 
um, or check him out. Um, so why shouldn't we pray like all the time for the same thing? Well, now, if you, you had a child, and you love that child, and the child said, gee, I'd love to have this item. And you'd, you'd listen. You might not make a comment, but you took it in. Okay. And you know your what you can do. You know, you said, well, I'd I, I like to get that for you. But I got to work a couple more weeks. I got some overtime coming up, so I'll have the money then I'll go get it. And the next day, the kid comes back, I want this. And the next day, I want this. And the next day, I want this. And the next day, I want this. Pretty soon, you're going to say, you're going to start getting aggravated at the person praying all the time or asking all the time. You say, I already heard you. Now, I'll either determine that I can get it for you or I can't, or I don't think it's good for you, so I won't get it. But you have to trust me enough that I know what's best. So don't keep asking me. When you pray for the same thing over and over and over and over, you're telling God he hasn't heard you. And you're not trusting him to have heard you and then do the right thing. Remember the prayer, his will be done, not ours. His will, right, Lord? He's real, folks. He's really here. Every minute, you go to bed tonight, Jesus, the spirit of Jesus will be standing by your bed. Now, if he has someplace he has to go, to do something, he'll put an angel right now, and that angel is directly in, in tune with him. You stand right by your bed all night long. Never leaves. Wake up in the morning, still there. You go to work, still there. And if the Lord knows you love him and that you may take the time out to pray and go to church at least and maybe have some Bible studies and read the Bible every day, you can tell that angel, okay, he's going to have a car accident coming up here. So have him get a flat tire before he gets to that interception, because it's a bad car accident and he will be killed. And I don't, he's not ready. It's not time for him to come home yet. So get him, okay? And that's what will happen. That's how he looks out for us. The person gets a flat tire and he goes, oh man, what the Lord wants you to do in that? He said, thank you, Jesus. And then call AAA or get out and change the tire. And change it with a smile. Because you said thank you. So you know that that situation is for your good. You don't know what it was. You know? You get the tire fixed, you drive up the road, you see all the smashed cars, and, and then you realize wow, if I hadn't got the flat tire, I would have been in that action, or could have been. Remember this, nothing is by chance. This is God's design. Everything that happens to you, or to me, or to any other person in this world today, all the way through till we go to sleep, and then as we're sleeping, whatever happens is by his design. And you can't do anything to change it. Nothing. So when situations happen during the day, if they're good, enjoy them. Say, and while you're enjoying it, say, thank you, Jesus. Oh, that was good. If it's sad, be sad. Because sad situations require sadness. Jesus, shortest line in the Bible, Jesus wept when he found out Lazarus was dead. When he had to bring him back to life. Yeah. He going to heaven. And Jesus had to call him back. Wow. No one else could see that one. 
So anyway, listen. I don't know if I'll get another one done. I got to read the Bible with a friend in prominence about 10 o'clock. It's now 8.01, and I got to get this uploaded. But uh, and they, I don't know. I rebooted this thing. I don't know what something got set up. So I got some new changes on my software. Thank you, Jesus. I I didn't do it. I didn't know what was happening. I, I knew that my it's like taking forever to load Google. It's taking me forever to do stuff. I thought maybe I needed to do, you know, a hard drive clean out and realign all the bits. But this is better. Love, joy, and peace. I will be back here either tonight or tomorrow. God willing. Peace, brothers and sisters. Come join me each day. You just sit here. Lord with you. Lord with me. And uh, if you want to give me a, a, an email, I gave you my email address. Drop me a line. I'll get back with you. Maybe we can start just an email conversation. Load up some Skype and we could do video conferencing. Peace. Love you.